Hello, the purpose of this video is to show my friend Tim how to put together a figure. Here we have a samurai figure that is made by Tamiya and it says commemorating your visit. So I received uh, one of these when I went to the um, the Tamiya headquarters, and I have a video of that elsewhere in my uh, my YouTube channel. So, I have a few of these actually. So, I gave one to my friend Tim, and he'd like to learn how to put one of these together. So, um, at one of my schools, the history teacher, he thought that this samurai figure here is Kuroda Nagamasa the daimyo from Fukuoka. So, his helmet is seemingly identical to the horned helmet um, on this, this, this character here. I looked him up on the Japanese Wikipedia page and I can provide a link for that at the bottom of this, of this video and uh, in the uh, description. So, the problem is that the emblem which is like a three-leaf, like a clover or something, or some sort of a leaf, leafy design here, does not match the Nagamasa crest. Now, I found an article of samurai crests from the Sengoku period on another website called uh, www.samurai-archives.com and, um... Unfortunately, I cannot find the identical emblem that's on the back of this figure. So, which leads me to believe that this is probably just a fictional samurai character. So, and I've learned that the style of helmet is called kabuto. Which makes sense because of the kabuto mushi is um, like, a, like a, a beetle with the, the, like the pictures. So it's got like like a, a, a pincher like like this, and another pincher that uh, goes up, kind of goes down. So they're really strong. So that's that's where the style of helmet gets its name from. So yeah, um, commemorating your visit, Tommy headquarters, pretty cool. So first things first. Just going to uh, cut this off the runners here. Now, because this is a little bit difficult, I'm not cutting right next to the part at first. I'm going to cut it off first and then there. And do the same for the back part here. So, I have not built this figure yet, but this will be my, my first time. So, ooh, yeah, maybe I can cut it this way. There. Yeah, I can get it with an exacto knife later on. So, let's just see how this fits. not bad. It's not too bad. Alright. So, what we want to do is uh, use a strong glue. And I might have to use some putty to fill in some gaps, perhaps. Yeah. Other than that, the parts seem to line up fairly well. And then, of course, you just glue on the arms here. So... Oops, I missed a part here. Cut this thing off this guy's leg. Blink. There. Okay. So, um, now the paints, as if you've seen my other videos, the, especially the, the Nausicaa video, which has yet to be completed, 
Uh, also, I did these metal slug figures in the same fashion. So if you've seen those videos, you know, you might not get much out of this video. And again, this is for my friend Tim. So it's for him. It's for his knowledge. So what I use is these Delta Ceram coat paints. And this is from, uh, yeah, it says America's favorite acrylic paint. So this is American Hobby Paint. I use these to uh, to paint my figures. Now, normally, I've used flesh tone here, which is okay, I suppose. And, and that's what I used to do these these metal slug, but that's more of a Caucasian flesh tone. And uh, it's funny that uh, there's so much uh, anime they usually um, color all the characters like kind of Caucasian, I guess. So there's a bottle. This is what I call Japanese skin tone. See, I have them all written on the top here. Uh, this is called Spice Tan, and I actually found at uh, there's a there's a crafts chain uh, store store chain called Tokai in Japan, and it's mostly centered on um, uh, quilts, felts, you know, sewing, that kind of stuff. But they did have a small selection of Delta Ceram coat paints, and I was really happy. Unfortunately, they're just selling what they have, you know, just selling it off. They're not replenishing their stock. They're just going to be um, just getting rid of this slowly. But, so, let me uh, put the camera down here and you can see the difference. So this is flesh tone, and this is spice tan. This is a bit closer to Japanese complexion, I believe. So that's what I'm going to be using for the little samurai character for his face. So yeah, so let's let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so what I want to do first is use uh, <clears throat> testers cement for plastics, plastic models. I haven't used this in a while. So, stuff on the top is kind of yucky, blucky, blucky. Just want to squeeze all that out. Alright, so, let's put the cap back on. Yeah, it smells like my childhood. Okay, so, what I want to do is use a toothpick here and apply the glue along the inside here. It gets kind of stringy, so you have to be kind of careful. There. Okay. Get the stringy crap out of the way. Yucky. Yucky. Just yeah. All right. Now, just kind of push, press this together. There. Careful with your fingers. There. So, in order to keep it together, I'm just going to clamp it with some clothespins. Neat. Okay. Look at this guy. Help me. Help me. I'm just, um, let this dry. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use this right now. 
don't think I'm going to use this anymore, it's kind of stringy. Um, anyhow, I'm going to use the Tamiya Cement, because it has a nice brush on it. And um, so what I'm doing here is brushing on, so you see, oh, I see, uh, I've already started here. Just brushing along the seam line, and this kind of fills in some cracks. Just maybe a little tiny little crack right here. And in the shoulder area here. There. So maybe this way I don't need to use the uh, putty to fill in the cracks. I'm just use the glue to do so. And not so bad really. Not here. Let me look on the other side here. Now, so it's, it's kind of convenient that the, the parting line kind of fits like the back part here. So it's, uh, that's, that's pretty strategic, I think. And on the inside of the legs, no problem. Yeah. So just a little bit on the shoulders, mostly. There you go. Yay. So, next, <clears throat> you can attach the arms. So, um, before you do that, there's one important thing to do. Is what you do is you, you turn them around here, and uh, you, you make his arms kind of look like, you know, how you, how you hug yourself. And, it, it, you know, you can make it look like you're making out with yourself, and you're, you're all like making kissy noises. And then like this, and he's like all feeling his own butt, he's like, <laughs> like that, because he's a crazy samurai, right, and the other samurai don't like him, and because he's always singing like uh, 80s romance songs, like, and sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much, and it's the, the total eclipse of the heart, or something, and then like all the other samurai stay away from him because he's weird. And then he starts picking his nose. He's like, oh, what's you? Uh, <coughs> oh, I have hay fever. Uh, and he's like, wipe, you know, wiping his nose on his armor. And, you know, he's like the creepy samurai that nobody likes. So, let's um, glue his arms on. Because um, a samurai without arms is... Um, probably a samurai who lost the battle, I guess. <laughs> don't see too many of those, I guess. I don't know. So you can see that... The, oh, shit, pickle. Sorry. Um, there. It, it's pretty obvious how the... Where the arm goes. There. So, you just fit the contours... And then put the glue on the other arm. And then it just fits like so. Like magic. Except it's not magic, it's just glue. <laughs> if you think it's magic, then you're kind of stupid. <coughs> so here, yeah. Look at him, he's like, look at me. He must be... I don't know, is he going to hold something or what? I don't know why his, his arm's like that. So, uh... Yeah, he put a football. <laughs> football players of the Sengoku period. Cool, huh? So, um... Just going to let the paint dry. And stop touching him from now. Okay, next step is to do some sanding. So this is some 600 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to sand. And actually what I should have done is um, done this before I attached the arms. But I was a spaz, as you can already tell. 
So, um, that's where I made the mistake. So, I'm just, uh, yeah, and what else you can use? <clears throat> it's an emery board. I can s s fit this in there. Yeah. And so I just got this at the, um, the cosmetics department uh, at the drugstore. Uh, just kind of smooth that a little bit. Smooth this part here. So up here it's uh, maybe I sanded a little bit on the shoulder here over where we uh, filled in with the glue. Hmm. There. Now, it's not really that noticeable on the on the feet, the boots. But I, uh, I oh look at that! I missed a spot here. So when I when I cut the parts off the runners, it's got a little bit of a gate left over there. Okay, so. Again, I'm making this video for my friend Tim. So, <clears throat> this you would call the runner, or the tree, or whatever, the sprue. Um, these uh, parts here are called the gates. That's this where it's connected to the um, from from the runner to to the actual part. These are called gates. So. I didn't cut all of them off, apparently. So, actually, this guy's boot here might need to be. And just whittled down a little bit. Now, I also have a file here. So, after, <clears throat> after washing off the dust, I noticed that the shoulders need to be a little bit more rounded. So that's what I'm doing right here. That feels much better. They were a little bit pointy. So I was filing it in one direction. A little bit too much. There we go. Okay, the next step is to prime. So, put down some stuff here. So I'm going to use Mr. Base White 1000. So. I'm going to use a little paint tray here. I got this at the stationery store. And, um, and yes, Tim, you can borrow this. And uh, this is a little paint stirrer. You can use a mimikaki if you want. If it, you know, you can use a toothpick. It's whichever. Um, I like this paint stirrer though. Oops, I got some on my fingers. And this is my, actually this is my first time with this bottle, opening this bottle here. So I'm going to stir this up considerably. Now this is lacquer based. So... If this needs thinning, we'll just use a lacquer thinner. This is pretty... Pretty thin to begin with. Let's um, put some in here. Yeah. Maybe I'll thin it just slightly. So I'm going to use lacquer thinner. This is Tommy lacquer thinner. And I need a little eyedropper thing. Use a little 
dropper. Just make one little drop or so. Maybe two. No, I'll do one for now. Let's see how it paints on. Okay. So I get the little Paul the Samurai here. And this is a. Uh, this is basically just a bamboo skewer with an electric alligator clip taped onto it. So, people say, hey Greg, you really like to paint people with a broad brush, don't you? And I'm like, well yeah, just uh, take a look at my little samurai friend here. And uh, let's, let's uh, test this out like this. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll spin this on a little bit. And because this is lacquer based, it's going to probably dry very quickly. A little creepy face here. Oh, I can't breathe. Blah, 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 blah. I see it's already drying on the back here. <laughs> so now I'm going over it with a second coat. I don't think it has to be pretty. You just have to uh, um, just get it more or less covered. So you want to get in between here. Like in the palms of his hands and such. There. So we're going to be painting on top of this. This is just a primer, so it doesn't have to be pretty. So, again, this is Mr. Base White. 1,000. After about four coats, I think this is pretty well covered. It's just really thin coats. So, it, you know, it takes several coats to build up. But uh, it's, it's pretty much covered. I'm pretty satisfied with this. So I'm just going to let this dry. And then I will be working on the acrylic paints. So. Let's um, I'm just gonna stick this in a piece of styrofoam here, let them dry. Now I want to clean up this mess. So I'm gonna use a lacquer thinner here. I'm gonna clean up this mess. So let's get a <clears throat> paper towel and uh, okay. See, it's, it's drying up on my paint stirrer. I need to do something about that. Yucky grody. So, next. I will want to try to remove as much paint out of this as possible without damaging the bristles. There. You just dip it in here and clean off the brush. <laughs> 